We all know about the Mac Pro's modularity and customization options that are available to users who might want to upgrade their machines. Whether you decide to do it at the time of purchase or go the DIY route and upgrade some of those components on your own, it's never been easier than it has with this new Mac Pro. PCIe expansion slots is not a new concept by any means, but when it comes to Apple computers, you'll really only find this available in the Mac Pro. And with those eight PCIe expansion slots, there's a lot of room for, well, expansion. You can add extra USB ports, graphic cards, audio cards, and even storage options. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install and take advantage of PCIe expansion slots to upgrade your Mac Pro. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Since my baseline Mac Pro only came with a measly 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, which the more I say out loud, the more absurd it sounds that Apple is only including this as the baseline option. But thanks to PCIe expansion slots, you can easily add SSD storage to your Mac Pro. This is the OWC Excelsior 4M2, and inside of it is a 4TB NVMe SSD with speeds capable of around 6,000 megabytes per second, which is insanely fast. OWC also has an 8TB model available, and when you look at the price discrepancy between upgrading your SSD at launch as opposed to going the PCIe route, it's pretty significant. This four terabyte SSD comes in at just under $950. And if you wanna do the eight terabyte version, well, you can do so for only $1599. If I wanted to go four terabytes from Apple at my time of purchase, it would run me an extra $1,400. And if I wanted eight terabytes, well, you're looking at an extra $2,600. So if you wanna save anywhere from 500 to $1,000 for an SSD, that's significantly faster than the internal SSD from Apple, this is definitely one of the better routes to go. All right, so if you want to install this SSD, it's pretty simple. First, you need to take the lid off of the Mac Pro, but obviously you'll need to unplug all of the cables because you can't actually take the lid off of it without unplugging those cables anyway. And then above the eight PCIe slots, you'll see a lock unlock switch. Go ahead and unlock it by sliding that switch to the right. Then simply unscrew the brackets that are covering the slots where you wish to install the card. Since this is a single slot PCIe card, I can put it up at the top right underneath my Thunderbolt and USB ports. Apple advises you to use a Phillips head screwdriver, but these are also thumb screws. And so if you turn hard enough, they should unscrew with no tools required. Then go ahead and line up the pins on the card with the pins on the slot and insert the card. Once it clicks in, go ahead and slide that lock back to the left and reinstall the side bracket that you removed earlier. That's it. After you put on the lid and boot up the machine, you'll see your Excelsior SSD drive already up and running and ready to go sitting there on your desktop. Now, one quick side note, since this SSD does not actually replace your current internal drive, this will have no effect on the T2 chip, which is good news. I do think it's possible to make this your actual primary SSD uh, by installing Catalina and making it into a bootable drive, but I'm not sure what effects it would have, if any, with the T2 chip, and I haven't tried it yet. So if you do wanna go that route, you might have to do a little bit of research. This drive also comes with SoftRAID software to help you manage your drive if you want to configure this SSD into a RAID 0, 1, 4, or even 5 for better performance and reliability. But I decided right now to just use this as a normal full 4 terabyte SSD. After installing the SSD, I wanted to put that 6,000 megabytes per second claim to the test. And while my read and write speeds did not quite reach 6,000, it was still insanely fast, especially when you compare it to Apple's internal SSD. The Excelsior was able to hit write speeds of around 4,786 and read speeds of around 5,360. For reference, the internal 256 gigabyte drive was able to hit read speeds of only 1312 for write and 2232 for read. Now don't get me wrong, those speeds are still pretty good, but when you compare it to what OWC has to offer, it's really no contest. Now, how does this translate in real life? Well, uh, if you transfer large files like I do on a daily basis, um, I transferred over a project file that had 50 gigabytes worth of raw video footage over to my internal SSD first, and the transfer took around 48 seconds to complete. 
Now, if I transferred over the same folder to the PCIe SSD that I just installed, it finished in 20 seconds. So not only is this SSD saving you actual money when you purchase it, compared to purchasing uh, an SSD upgrade from Apple when you buy your Mac Pro, but it's also saving you time, which a lot of people equate to money. So there's more savings there if you need it. I'm sure there are tons of good options available, not just this OWC 4 terabyte SSD, but there are plenty of other uh, NVMe SSD options that you can use for PCIe expansion. So just do some research before making a final decision, but I do wanna show you what you could do with the new Mac Pro and how easy it is to upgrade your machine and save yourself some money. And this OWC option is a good one if you're interested in picking one up. So go ahead and let us know what PCIe cards you think we should check out, and maybe we'll make another video on it in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.